Hello, this is Bmail, and I have a wireless programmable clock. So this clock can be set to any time from 0 to 60 minutes, and it can be placed anywhere on the map as long as you have the wires somewhere else. It doesn't have to be with the clock, so this will take up little space, and you can hide it under your map or whatever you're using it for. Uh, the great thing here is I can start and stop it whenever I want as well. So I'm going to stop it, and as you see, it stops. It's not instantaneous, but it's within two or three seconds. I can start again. And there you go. And I have two options here is reset it to 30 and 60 minutes, but they're pretty simple to do once you figure out how it's working. So there's your 30 minutes reset. And uh, let's put it at 60 minutes. Just like that. So that's the basics of how it functions. Um, I'll show you how it works in a second. So here's the inside of the clock, uh, the wireless receiver of the clock. Now, it's pretty simple compared to uh, the other component. It's just a, a clock, a simple clock. It's constantly ticking to just refresh the screen. That's what you think of it, at least. Um, so the seven command blocks, each of them are sending a signal to three of the lights. So this repeater here would turn on those three lights. So this one here is testing for seven segment one. This is the variable, or the score, I think it's called. Uh, this would be the first segment of this first seven segment display. Uh, this would be the second segment, and so on. And basically all you have to do is when you want a certain segment to be lit up, you set this score to a 1, which says, okay, turn this one on. So these will constantly be updating and changing as the numbers are counting. Um, and this simple one here, uh, these are all just copied and pasted of the first one, and they're all just being refreshed. Um, but the true, true power behind this uh, comes from the other component, which is doing all the math to make it count down. And this can be seen right here. It's pretty compact for uh, what it's doing. And it's, it's not all too complicated. Um, I tried to color code it as best I could, but basically the red here is the start and stop. So this red here, um, this is a clock checking if the game started, uh, if it successfully is then it's letting this clock tick, which is letting the whole system count. Um, yeah, and then this, these two here ending, they're stopping the clock at the end of the, the timer. So the timer counts down all the way to zero. Um, and you have the, you have four different displays you have to update, so you have the second, uh, second number two is what I called it, minute and minute number two. Um, so this clock right here is the only clock you need, it's counting the seconds. Um, so every time every time this clock activates, you're going to be checking first if the clock is at zero. So if the seconds have reached zero, then you want to set them to ten. So that can recount down to zero. When that happens, when it's successful, this lights up, sending a signal down the chain. Um, and on every single clock pulse, it's going to remove one, so that's counting it down, so it can get to the zero. Uh, when this pulse is sent to this one, the same thing's done, but for the second, uh, for the second second, and the same thing happens, it counts down until it reaches zero, and then sends a successful signal to the minute. Um, the minute does the same thing, all the way down to minute two. And then once minute two has reached zero and it's set back up to six, then you have successfully reached the end and you can signal the end of a game or just to stop the clock. Uh, I think I just, yeah, I set the game started variable or score to zero. Um, so basically, these are keeping track of the numbers for seconds, minutes, seconds and minutes. And those are used in here on these four levels to set the seven segment display. So this row here um, shows nine through zero. As you can see the lights coming down, 
um, the command when the command box true, it sends out a signal down the line which activates the seven segment. So in this case, when this when the score for second is zero, then it's going to set all the proper segments of the seven segment display to zero. Uh, so this one will take care of segment one, seven segment one, seven segment two, three, four. And as you can see, these ones will not be moving every single time because these are the minutes, so this is only going to change every minute. Whereas this one down here is going to be changing every second. And these are all just simply on the clock being refreshed or being checked every second. And if uh, this successfully changes, then this signal will successfully change the seven segment variables and refresh it over here. Uh, that's why this has a much faster clock. I think I have it on two ticks, yeah. That way it doesn't miss any seconds. I guess you could just put it on five ticks and it'd be fine. Refresh every second, but just in case. Um, you can also speed this clock up, so if you don't want it to be actually a second, you just want to count down that's a little faster, you can drop it down to two ticks safely, and it will still function. Uh, the seven segment will look a little funky because of how fast it's updating but it still does work. Yep. And then we can, we can try this out. Set it 30 minutes. So, as I was saying, how this is pretty simple once you figure out how it works. Um, so if you want to set the time to 30 minutes, you set the seconds to 9, 5, the second seconds to 5, the minutes to 9, and then the second minutes to 2, so that will show 2959, which is 1 second short of 30 minutes, but you get the idea. And did the same thing here, but the only difference is I set this one to a 5 to show that it's 60 minutes. Uh, you can put those to any number you'd like, really. It shouldn't matter. Um, the only thing is if you s don't set this at all, um, it may get a little confused, but it should still work for what you're what you're needing from this side. You can also leave out this half of it if you don't need it. Um, the bonus to the way it did this is you can simply add a fifth, a sixth. So if you want to throw hours into there, let's say you had a 24-hour game or something ridiculous, or you want the game not to last more than four hours, you said you could put a whole another LED here very simply, add another row on top of this, extend that a little further and it would work. Um, so that's the basics of my wireless clock, uh, wireless programmable clock I guess. Um, yeah, so if you have any questions about how it works, let me know. I'll keep a, I'll put a map download so you guys can check it out. Uh, thanks for watching.